Okay, guys, we're up to part 24 of the Great Farm Cleanup. I'm continuing this one straight on from the last one. In this episode, we have a few jobs to do for Mum around the place, including cleaning out the old bug zapper. Um, it's full of spider webs. Apparently, it still works, but we're getting some milder nights now, and there's a lot of moths and mosquitoes. I mean, people call them a mozzie zapper. I suspect they don't actually zap very many mosquitoes. It's probably more turning moths into um, burning smells and a bit of lightning. But anyway, she wants it fixed up, so I'll clean it out for her. We've also got to pick up some branches that have fallen down if we angle the camera down there. We've got some big palm trees here next to the farmhouse, and it was a bit stormy last night, and a few branches have come down. So we'll drag those around to the uh, where we're going to have a bonfire. And I've also got to do a few other jobs. One of them is to patch up one of the chook sheds where some sparrows are getting in, and they're getting in and eating the chook feed. Uh, what else? There's a list of jobs, so we'll get onto those and uh, then we might get back to a bit more shed cleaning later today. Okay, let's take this out to the shed. It's been a long, long time since there's been a nice clean workbench in this shed to be able to pull something apart. So, what are we going to need there? You have to get a shifter on that. Or the right size spanner. Amazing, you can find the right tools when a workshop's clean too. Not having a go at Dad, I'm having a go at just about every guy in the world that has a shed. It just happens. Alright, we've got spiders in here. No, uh, don't think so. Alright, we'll blow that off of the air compressor. We will take the uh, it looks like the top assembly just lifts out and then we'll be able to blow compressed air right through the bottom and that's probably all we need to do. So a couple of screws here. I could even find a screwdriver. And that should lift out. Maybe. Got a couple of bend over tabs we've got to straighten out. Coco's still barking at me. She just loves to be included and hates to be excluded. We'll go back in and move those branches in a minute. That'll keep her happy. All right, there we go. Yep, a lot of muck in there. A lot of cremated bugs. Okay, we'll get the air compressor going and clean that up. Now, after giving us a good clean up, i am decided I'm not going to put it back together. Uh, we've got some very charred wires here. I'm not sure if they were arcing. I think they were arcing onto the outside screen. The inside screen and the outside screen have different, have a high voltage difference between them, which is what fries the insects. And it's been arcing down onto that wire and it's burned all the insulation. But um, more the problem is that the mounting brackets, the plastic mounting brackets that keep the screens separated, that one's totally broken off. Well, it's actually burnt. It looks like it's burnt. And the one this side's broken off as well. So um, it really needs some sort of insulating mounting bracket again. I'm not going to try and fix that. It's just too involved. Uh, Mum tells me she has got a brand new zapper in a shed somewhere, still in its box that she bought new quite a long time ago, so we're going to use that one. I have some of these ones at home at my place, and I think one of them has a blown globe, and I've had checked the prices on the globes, and they're quite expensive. So assuming this globe still works, and I think it will be, uh, I'll take this back as spares for mine. I might even need the transformers. If I'd never use them, I'll just scrap them out. I mean, both transformers will uh, be able to sell for scrap. Plus, we've got the wire, of course. So I'll just put this in the van. I'll take it home and I'll set up the new one for mum uh, to save any mucking around. And there we have our new bug zapper hanging there. It's a slightly different design. Well, it's a majorly different design. It's got a fan in it. It's got a, a definite ultraviolet light in there. So hopefully it works well. And it looks like it's much easier to clean out with a removable 
area at the bottom for uh, taking away the cremated remains of annoying insects. So that's good, problem solved there. Okay, time to pick up some of these branches. They have some pretty nasty spikes on this end and you have to be careful because I believe they've got some poison in them. I know when you get jabbed the um, the splinter gets usually gets infected so uh, being a bit careful it's kind of nice that it's a damp wet day because the spikes aren't quite as sharp. Right we'll take these out to the paddock. Another thing that's happened is that we've cleaned up some more of this shed here. Now you remember the seed cleaner that we had here? Well a couple of guys, um, Matt and Ash, bought it off uh, Facebook Marketplace and come and loaded it with a winch onto their trailer and uh, they are going to use it for gold prospecting. They, they are going to convert it into a trommel to, uh, along with this other screen to hopefully find some gold. So that's great. And now we have an empty shed. Other than the main tractor, which I'll sell at some stage shortly, there's no rush for that. And the uh, log splitter belongs to Ross. So other than an old drum with some sump oil in it and some uh, barley that's not much good and the chooks, we're pretty cleaned up around this area of the farm. The other thing that I advertised on Facebook Marketplace was the old binder here. You will remember from the last episode. And we have a taker. Uh, a guy by the name of Gary, up, way up in New South Wales somewhere, is a passionate uh, antique farm machinery collector and he is absolutely stoked that he's uh, managed to acquire this one. He's not going to come down for a while because we have to organise transport. I've got to send him some dimensions. It'll probably go on a car trailer. But uh, we've got some other bits and pieces for it and some old canvases, so he's happy to take all those. And I'm sure Dad will be pleased that the, uh, the old binder is going to be preserved. And, uh, and loved for the historic piece of farm machinery that it is. A quick plumbing job here stopped a tap from leaking, so another job ticked off. It's nothing major, and it's just to water some of mum's plants around here. And even though that she knows she's not going to be here much longer, it's still nice to keep everything alive and, uh, and growing nicely. Also, I bagged up a bit more weed out of the silo for uh, a family in town that are really nice to mum. They look after her and... Uh, keep in touch make sure everything's okay and uh and young tom comes out and does a lot of mowing and whippersnipping for mum so happy to give them some wheat for their chooks another job to do on the list is to try and seal up around the chook shed because there's a lot of sparrows around here that you can see them flying around the trees there and they get in to the chook shed here so i think they're getting in around that top corner there's a bit of a gap there between the frame and perhaps along the tin here, they're squeezing in past there. So I'll have to try and block this off. Uh, there's a lot of wire all over the front of this shed to keep them out, but they always find uh, gaps. And it's amazing how uh, little sparrows can consume so much grain that the chooks are supposed to eat. Uh, one sparrow alone, of course, doesn't do it, but uh, when you have hundreds of them, they can really churn through the wheat. So I'll try and patch up the shed uh, I think there's another gap down the back corner I have to seal up. So we'll try and get that done. And uh, then another job ticked off the list, hopefully. I think the best method here is just to jam some old fly wire in the holes. Um, sparrows aren't likely to be able to pull it out. So I think I might just plug up the main holes. There's not much point going to too much trouble as... Um, you know, eventually, well, I mean, it's probably in relatively short frame. Uh, these sheds will probably be bulldozed. I don't think Ross wants to run chooks over here, but we need to keep it functional while mum's still using it. Let's set the camera up here for a little while and we might do a bit of a time lapse and just see where the sparrows fly in and out because there seems to be a lot around this morning.
So my secret surveillance camera clearly showed that I was barking up the wrong tree. The area above these gates was like a, a super highway for the sparrows. So I've just been twitching all the wire. I've got some, some tie wire and I've just been twitching all the mesh back against the frame and I've closed up above that gate. So I think that will work. Uh, a few sparrows do go through this little walkway. Uh, I don't know what we can do about that because the chooks need to come and go. And we don't want that left, well, that can't be left open overnight. The foxes get in. Um, but the whole thing is the sparrows are getting in. So maybe we'll have to install some sort of card reader where the chooks, you know, check in and it opens an automatic door. Maybe not. It'd probably be cheaper to buy roast chicken and forget about, and eggs and forget about these ones. Anyway, I think I've fixed this problem for now. Um, so job's done. Now, believe it or not, it's actually time to start cleaning a little bit of stuff out of the house. Uh, there's some tins up here that mum used to use all the time for biscuits, for cakes. Um, I think every Christmas she, she said they were full of shortbread and stuff. They're not going to be used anymore. Those were the days when I was young and we had like 20 or 30 people sit down for Christmas lunch. The farm was the place to be. Uh, nowadays, we've got to get rid of these. And I don't want mum climbing up ladders, so good chance for me to take some of these back to the shop. We'll see if there's any good ones here. And success, another part of the farm cleaned up. Let's go and have a look at the tins. Okay, there's quite an assortment. Some of them bring back memories from my childhood. Uh, some are more modern, and Coco's been checking them all out to see if there's any cake crumbs left. Uh, these ones are all quite modern tins, uh, and there's a few overseas type biscuit and cake tins. Not much value in those. Uh, something quite modern like this, but it's embossed and it shows a Melbourne tram. Yeah, you might get $5 for, but I'm not going to really hang out for dollars on those. I think I'll put all these in a box out the front of the shop, just maybe at a dollar each. Uh, the one at the back's quite a large cake tin, so I think they'll sell. Then we get into some earlier ones. That one there is a real sort of 60s theme. It doesn't appear to have any brands on it. There's no stickers left. The Arnott's tins always sell well, and I think this Tartan one is an Arnott's tin as well. So... They're in grams, they're not that old. In fact, I think this one has a barcode on it. So it's not very old, but it's cute and it's an Australian tin. So we might get $5 or $10 for those. Even a couple of old rolling pins I found, they'll sell well. They'll be at least $10 each. Uh, this one uh, always used to have lemon slice in it. Mum's famous lemon slice. So uh, it's a chocolates tin. Claremont, Tasmania, Cadbury's it would have been. Yeah, so uh, that's a nice Aussie tin. A little bit scratched. It's been well used. At least $10, maybe $15 there. Uh, this one's quite a nice scene with the dog and the cat in the old wheelbarrow. I think there's another chocolates tin. Cadbury's again, yes. So, uh, you know, 10 to 15 there. Uh, that one is unbranded, but it's quite a vintage tin, maybe 10 And the pick of them, oh, there's a Pascal's chocolates tin that's a Tasmanian tin that's in really good condition so at least 10 there I would say but the pick of them are these willow tins this is a classic willow cake tin uh, and that's going to be 15 to 20 maybe and these ones are both willow tins as well and they're in amazing condition they would probably be 1960s or into the 70s but uh, really good nick I'm going to go probably 20 to 25 dollars each on those tins so that adds up to a fair bit. I didn't do a telly, but uh, certainly much better than throwing them in the recycle bin. Okay, we've packed up all the tins that mum doesn't want. She did save three or four of her favourites, but it's time to start loading the van with some stuff for our trip back tomorrow. Back in the shed this evening, and I've just been working at this in between other jobs. Uh, the bench is almost cleaned off, and I know Dad still watches these videos. How about that, Dad? It's been a long time since that bench has been that clean. I've tidied up all the stuff that was hanging off the wall. I took down some shelving there because it was, it was a real mess. There was wasp nests over it and everything. Uh, so, yeah, I've got a few interesting bits off this bench. There's a really nice plane here, wood plane. It's in great condition. It's an English-made Stanley uh, number 5. So that's a good one. Uh, I've been taking the drawers out of here. I think we'll take them out. It's just a steel-framed workbench. Homemade job, I would imagine. 
And the old drawers, I've pointed out one other time, they're off a, a very early chest of drawers. I don't think they're cedar, I think they're pine. But I'm going to take them back and uh, wash them up like I did with the other boxes. And uh, my girls are going to use some of them as display in their, uh, in their restaurant and in their cafe. But I am salvaging the drawer knobs because they're beautifully made and they actually thread in. So uh, I think they would have pretty good value to a furniture restorer. But uh, how cool do they look? I don't think I'd even sand them back or repaint them or anything. I think they're magnificent just to clean up. So I'll save those. Uh, I may even take them home. I might have a project for those myself. Uh, it's kind of nice knowing where they came from. They could have been my grandfather's or even his father's. It's a pretty early, would have been an early chest of drawers. So I've cleaned out under the bench. Coco has been having a scratch around there. Uh, I haven't done underneath that part and I've still got some drawers to empty. Uh, the other things I found here, we have a, a footprint uh, adjustable wrench and I've talked about these before and apparently they're quite common. Uh, I do see quite a few of them and they are quite handy wrenches. They sell all right. And there's an impact driver here. These are great tools. They work really well. And it's got the complete set of bits with it. Uh, I think I've got one, but if I haven't, I might keep that one until I find my other one in case I'm, I might have lost it or sold it or something. Because I'd like one of those in my workshop. Uh, this is a curious little piece. Now... I've never actually used one, but I believe it's a taco for reading the revolutions per minute on something. And it's supposed to have a rubber tip on the end of that, which you then press against a spinning shaft, like on the end of it, like an electric motor or something. And as that spins around at a crazy amount of revs, whatever your motor's doing, it turns this dial here. And I can't really demonstrate it one-handed but it's geared so that this turns really, really slowly. And I think it's a matter of counting so many positions on this gauge in a minute that gives you the revolutions that the actual tip's doing. Something like that anyway. Not a bad uh, old tool. I probably wouldn't use it, but I will clean that up one that up when I get home and uh, we'll probably sell it. Not sure what it's worth. $10, $20, depends how it cleans up. I'm not sure. Uh, a nice old spanner here. I don't think it's got any branding on it, but we'll clean that one up. It's at least a $5 spanner. Some old padlocks. Uh, that one's nicely branded, but I don't. I did find some loose keys, so I'll check them out at home. This is a gate latch, and I think it's a HV McKay latch, uh, which were made in Sunshine in Melbourne, and they're quite collectible. The gates bring a few hundred dollars, and I think it goes that way. Yes, it does, of course. So you can latch the gate and it can swing either way. Uh, I think these bring 20 to $30. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this brass piece, I believe, is a an army kit bag handle. Uh, the large bags that, you know, you hear them talk about their kit bag, uh, especially in World War II era. I think that this would date to then. Uh, I think they were lockable. And you would basically use that as a handle to carry your kit bag. Uh, $10 maybe. It might clean up quite well. That's a saw set for uh, setting the teeth on a wood saw. It appears to work fine. Uh, some of these are brass. I don't think this one is. It's very dirty. We'll wash that up. It might get $10 or something. Uh, and some nice old spanners here. Uh, they're large SID chrome. Very early SID chrome spanners. Bit hard to sell open-enders. Maybe $5 each. This one's unusual. I've got to do a bit of checking here. It's a Whitworth spanner, 716 Whitworth. And that symbol, I feel I should know that. I think it might be Singer, but not the sewing machine. Uh, Singer actually made cars. I think that might be it. I'd have to check. Um, oh, actually, maybe it says MH. Maybe it's Sunshine Massey Harris. Don't know. Got to do some checking. If you know, leave a comment. Uh, it's possibly then, rather than the car spanner, it's possibly an agricultural machinery spanner. Whitworth would probably indicate that it's English. So that's a nice spanner. It might do quite well. And I've got lots of just little tubs of stuff that I'm taking back. There's another handle of a drawer. Uh, lots of bits of brass. Some old, old door handles off cars. Um, a cast iron handle of a file. 
lots of just hardware and solder and bits of brass, uh, galvanised fencing stuff, things that I can sell, things that are too good for scrap metal. I'll sort all those out at home. Uh, it's not hard to take that sort of stuff back and I'll set, sort that out in my shed. And we're just continuing to build up tubs here of scrap metal and uh, larger scrap as well and a bit of stuff that I'm taking home. So I haven't had much time in the shed this time uh, because we've had a lot of other little jobs to do, but uh, still getting away, getting through it, you know, little steps, baby steps, eating an elephant one bite at a time, that whole bit. So we'll work along this bench or this area. Uh, I won't get it finished uh, this trip because I'm going home in the morning, but we'll get, get through there eventually. And that's where we'll leave this episode. Um, we'll finish up here tonight. I'm just doing a little bit more. I'll pack the van up in the morning. We'll head home and that will be the end of this one. We've done lots of different things this, this trip. Now, we did go and see Dad this afternoon and he was doing pretty well, actually. He was in good spirits this afternoon, but he has had a few bad days lately and they have upped his, his painkillers or at least made morphine available for him for his bad days. Um, unfortunately, he's probably not going to be good enough to come home for a visit. Um, you know, so we're not sure, but at least he does watch these videos, so at least he can see what's going on. Um, this is as much his journey as yours and mine. Well, probably more his because it's, you know, we're looking at wrapping up his livelihood, um, his life pretty much. But yeah, he's um, he's in good spirits and he's still with us for now. And I can still ring him up and say, you know, hey, dad, where's the 10 mil spanner? Um, and he's, you know, he still loves talking about the old days and that sort of stuff. So we'll visit him as much as he can. we can. Mum goes over there every day. And uh, even though he doesn't read the comments because he watches the videos on the phone, um, I do relay a lot of your comments and mum certainly uh, reads some of them and we appreciate all your support. So uh, that ends this episode. We'll be heading back to Ngambi tomorrow. Uh, I've got more videos coming up on what's going on over there. Uh, we've got another unboxing from the emergency storage shed coming up and I'll be back here relatively soon, I would imagine. So we'll catch you guys real soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.